So in the previous video, we set up our start stop area. If the start button is pressed, then the, our run auxiliary will co become true. And if the stop button is pressed, then the run auxiliary will become false. So uh, we're going to start to program the sequence. So we'll program in this area and we'll have a look at what we have to do. So if the start button is pressed, cylinder A should go out. And when it reaches switch A1, there should be a three second delay. Then cylinder A should return until it reaches cylinder A0. And it should repeat for four cycles. So we will go back and start the program. To program this, this is sequential. Uh, so one thing happens at a time and after each, uh, each part of the program happens, something triggers the next step. So the best way to achieve this in structured text is to use a case statement. So the case statement will allow us to write if statements within a case and that will mean that only the items within the case that's active will work. You'll see what I mean when we, when we start. So this is another keyword case and I'm going to create a variable here called next. So type the word next, hit enter. And in this case I don't want this, this value to be boolean this variable needs to be an int variable because we want to be able to move up through a number of different numbers here. Um, and the other thing is I don't want it to be a global variable, I want it to be local to this program, just to the sequence program. Because we could uh, be in situations where we write a number of different programs with case, case statements within them, and if next was a global variable it would be available to all the programs. And in this case, I just want it to work within the sequence program. So leave it as a variable. And you can see your local variables appear here within the program. Case next off. And the first case will happen here in this area. So that's zero. And uh, finish that with a colon. And within the, this area, we are going to write an if statement. So to begin with, if the start button, our global variables, actually it's not the start button, it's the run ox, because we're, use, we're, we're using the start stop to control whether this run auxiliary comes on. So if run ox, and A0 are active, then we want to the cylinder to extend. So that has to go true. It's very important to get the syntax correct. So we use the colons equal sign and semicolons in the correct places. If you don't and you build your project you will find a lot of errors here. Uh, you need to work down through the program and correct anywhere where you should have colon equal sign or semicolon. So I'm saying A extend should go through and the next step is going to be 10. The reason I'm moving in tens is if I find I need to add a little bit of program somewhere in the middle, I can use any number in between two values that I'm working between. And I need to complete the end. If, so if all of these things happen, the run ox is true and a0 is true, then a extend will go true and we will move on to next 10. And if we go back and have a look at our configuration, if 
the run ox is true and the a0 is true, which will mean that it's sitting in the start position, then a extend will come on, the cylinder will move forward. So the next thing that's going to happen is cylinder or switch a1 is going to become active. So if run ox and a1 then we need to set our timer active so what, how we do that is ten, set timer 1 input true we also want to extend to stay true until the timer output comes on so we don't have to say anything here. If it's set true here, it'll stay true until it's set false. Next equals 20. And end if. Next step will be if Runox and we get a signal from the timer which will mean the three seconds have lapsed. So that's this Q value from the timer. Then we want A extend to go off. So we want to set it false. We also want to send our timer input false. F2. If we set true above, we need to set it false below turn it back off again. And next equals 30. Semicolon. And if. So at this stage the runox is still true. Timer 1 Q, so that's the output from the timer comes on, A extend goes false, and the timer 1 input goes false. So at this stage, the cylinder starts to return. And and actually what we ha also have to do at that stage is we have to get our counter to increment by 1. So I'm going to use the timer output to increment the counter. So I'll insert that here. F2 counter 1 input. We will set true. We're moving on then to 30. So this A extend went true. The cylinder moved out. When the cylinder reached switch A1 the timer started to count. The cylinder stayed out until the timer uh, lapsed and you got a value coming from the timer Q. The A extend solenoid turned off so the cylinder would retract and the counter input got turned on so that the counter would pulse by one. So we've got to turn the counter off. So if runox the counter input off and A0 then counter typing I'll just use F2 counter 1 input equals false
so it turns it back off and leaves it ready to pulse again the next time the timer gives a signal out. Next, at this stage, we're ready to go back to the start of the cycle. So I'm going to send it back to the program back to zero. So that's the basis of our program. If we start with a case statement, we also need to end with so uh, end underscore case. Now we're not finished yet because we are, we have to think about what happens when the counter lapses to four. So this is going to cycle through. It'll work its way down through the case statement. When it gets to here, it'll go back up to zero and it'll keep going. So we've got to use the counter to turn the system off. So come back to the next video and I'll show you how to do that.